samples in an Eppendorf tube, you want to make sure that you're mixing with the right tool. So don't try mixing with the tiny little pipette tip, but also don't overdo it. You want to take a bigger pipette tip, but you want to have it set to a lower volume than you actually have in here. Right now, I have it set to more than I have in here. And what's gonna happen is that, yeah, it mixes it well, but I'm also introducing bubbles because it's sucking up air and then it's causing bubbles. What you wanna do instead is set your pipette to, um, to a lower volume than you have in your solution, in your tube. And this is going to then allow you to mix correctly, uh, mix it thoroughly without letting in air. Don't dip your pipette tip too deep into the liquid just on the surface and then go up and down with it. You don't want to get stuff stuck on the outside of your pipette tip. Also, be sure that you don't kind of overdo it and push your pipette tip too far in and then have things spill out the top. That's not good either. Alternatively, what you can do is you can skip that pipette mixing altogether and you can use my favorite thing, which is the finger flick or do a little bit of pipetting first. Um, but basically, a really great way is to mix things is this like finger vortex so you kind of just and see it's getting nice and mixed well and it's kind of fun you're able to finger vortex even if you have like an enzyme in there so something that's sensitive if you have an enzyme though you don't want to actually vortex yeah that vortex is going to make it so that it's really well mixed but it can harm your enzymes and so don't do that if you have a large enough volume, you can also mix by inverting the tube. Um, and if you have an, a lot of samples, maybe you're doing a mini prep in the beginning parts, what you can do is you can actually just have all the tubes in your rack and then invert the whole rack, making sure that you're holding on really, really tight. No matter what method you use to mix things, you then want to give it a little like pulse centrifugation to make sure that if you had stuff on the walls, it's going to get pulled down. Now. You don't want to just rely on that pulse centrifugation to mix things because the centrifuge, what it's going to want to do is it's going to be just spinning. It's not like actually mixing things up and down. So by doing your finger vortex, by doing your pipette mixing, all these things are helping you get a thoroughly, um, completely mixed solution. A lot of times the, the thing that you're pipetting is going to be like a small volume into a big volume, such as if you're with an enzyme. Um, you, so you set up your whole master mix of reactions, you've got everything going, and then you add the enzyme last. And you add the enzyme last so that it doesn't get to work when they start working when you don't want it to, or so that it, and so that it gets into a nice, perfect environment that you prepare for it when you're ready. And so you're pipetting this little tiny volume of a really viscous thing into your solution. And so remember that it's going to actually because it's often really viscous, it's gonna need that mixing. Um, but remember to be gentle with that mixing. Remember that when you're pipetting that small volume into the big volume, make sure that it actually all goes out of your tip and keep your thumb thoroughly pressed when you're pulling out. Um, so remember to set that tip to, don't just use that little tiny tip, um, use the bigger tip, but set it to a lower volume than the volume you have in your tube. When you are pipetting up and down, make sure that you are not introducing air and happy mixing.